Welcome to Electra Online, and here we're going to talk about chemical bonding. Of course, before we can actually start talking about the equations of chemical bonding, we have to have a structure by which we do that. And so Lewis came up with a really good way to do that. So we call the symbolism that we use to indicate chemical bonding, we call them Lewis structures. And so before we can talk about the Lewis structures, we have to talk about the Lewis symbols, the symbols for each atom that indicate what the atom looks like from a bonding perspective. Why does one atom bond with another? Well, it has a lot to do with the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level that are populated in that particular atom. For example, if we take hydrogen, of course, hydrogen only has one electron and it populates the first energy level. So we indicate somehow that there's an electron there in its first energy level. But then if we go, for example, to chlorine, chlorine has atoms in its first energy level, in its second energy level, and in its third energy level. But only the electrons in the third energy level are involved in the bonding process with another atom. And so Lewis seemed to then think that it's only important to indicate only those electrons in the outer level, in the valence band, in the valence level, and ignore the other ones. So that's what Lewis symbols do. They ignore all the other electrons except for those that are in the outermost energy level, which may be involved in the bonding process. So in this case, chlorine only shows seven electrons in its outer level and ignores the other 10 electrons that are in the first and the second level combined. Same with sulfur phosphorus, silicon, aluminum, and so forth. If we go to the elements over here, boron, carbon, notice that we're ignoring the, the electrons in the innermost energy level, in the S or the 1s orbital, and only talk about the, uh, the electrons in the second energy level, which are going to be involved in any sort of bonding with any other atoms. So if we take a look here, hydrogen only has one, and helium has two electrons in the outermost energy level, which is the only energy level. And so here we, here we know that the helium energy level is filled because it has two electrons. Here we know that hydrogen only has one out of the two spots filled with an electron, and that's how it's indicated. For lithium, we know lithium has three electrons, but we're ignoring the inner two. We only indicate the one in the second energy level. So this is the one, this is the electron that's gonna be involved in bonding with other atoms, not the two on the inner, innermost energy level. Same for beryllium, it has only two electrons in the second energy level, we ignore the two in the inner. Here it's three, there it's four, there it's five. Also notice how they're spaced out. When there's, for example, four with carbon, we show that they're spaced out as much as possible because electrons do not like to be close together, they repel each other, so we wanna kinda of give an indication that they're as far away from each other as possible. And also this indicates that since electrons like to be paired up, carbon has the possibility of making four separate bonds with these four electrons. As opposed to nitrogen, which already has one of its orbits, orbitals completely filled, and so there's only a possibility of three bonds with nitrogen because there's only three empty spots in the valence band. Here with oxygen, notice that it typically can only form two bonds like this for each oxygen atom because the other two orbitals are already filled. Fluorine only needs one extra electron to fill its valence band and therefore it simply seeks to gain one more electron to make that bond. And typically that is what determines the kind of bonding that you can have between the different elements. Notice that we have a structure like that or at least a symbol for that for each atom in the periodic table. Uh, that is most likely going to be uh, involved in the bonding process. Notice that we only have it for the first two uh, columns and for the last six columns, the representative elements. And we'll have some different symbolism that we'll be using for the uh, transition elements, but that will be for a later video. So here at least you can see these are the atoms that are gonna be most involved in the bonding process. And this is how we indicate where the electrons are located and how we can then see how they're gonna be involved in the bonding process. Okay, so it's a good start, and then we'll delve into the Lewis structures in just a few videos from here.